Okay, I just wanted to go over some first impressions with this fluid extractor before I actually use it. And also give you a little bit of background about some of my experience with fluid extractors. So in terms of that background, I have been using fluid extractors since 2014. And I started using them when I needed to change oil on watercraft. And the only way to change oil on many watercraft these days is to use a fluid extractor. There's no physical way to remove a drain bolt, drain the oil, etc. You have to use a fluid extractor and basically remove the oil through the dipstick using a device like this one. And I found that it was, and still is, a very effective way of cleanly and efficiently changing oil. So I ended up getting two fluid extractors, one for watercraft and a smaller one, which I also use for generators, lawn mowers, snow blowers, that sort of thing. And I've had great results using fluid extractors for a number of years. There's some debate about what is the better way to change oil. That's a, a whole nother discussion, you know, using an extractor versus a drain plug. But in many circumstances like watercraft, you have no option. You have to use an extractor. There is no way to change the oil any other way. So I've had great results, um, including on the small engines where you don't need to be worried about changing crush washers, stripping drain plugs, that sort of thing. But bottom line, I like using these. The two that I currently have are manual only. So there's no ability to use uh, an airline for extractions, which is the reason that I got this unit because I wanted to try it with an airline. So basic first impressions here, the air fitting here they give you is loose and has no sealant, uh, sealant on the thread. So that's a minor issue. Uh, I'll address that. Otherwise the build quality seems to be on par with the other extractors that I have. The plastic is solid and the overall construction seems to be up to speed with being good for fluid extractions. Now, I do have something of a concern with the design of this type of fluid extractor. I've been doing some reading about these and basically you can see on the bottom there is a small check valve here and there's a small hole that goes through the bottom of the tank into the tank. So that is blocked with a check valve, a rubber check valve. And then on the inside here, there is another rubber seal that seals uh, the tank. So if you were to leave oil in this extractor for a long period, of, I shouldn't say long period, for any period of time, you are possibly increasing the risk of leaking oil through the bottom of this extractor. Now, I suspect that it will be perfectly fine for fluid extractions and then taking the fluid and dumping it into a suitable container, only leaving a residue in the tank here, and that should be perfectly fine. But I would not want to leave this full of oil for any period of time due to the potential by design for some of that oil to leak out. Now you're gonna see, I've broken this video up into a few pieces uh, and I'm actually going to disassemble this so I can show you what I am talking about more specifically. So uh, keep an eye out for follow-ups on this video here, thanks. Okay, so basically I've taken the top of the extractor off so I can show you the inside of the extractor and uh, something of what I consider to be a vulnerability with the design of this extractor in terms of a potential leak scenario. Not necessarily while you are using it, but while you are storing it, if you have oil in this container. So basically, this is a top down look. I've taken the top off and you can see at the bottom of the extractor, there is a hole in the bottom now I've taken out, there's a small rubber plug and valve that goes on the bottom and I'll show you that in just a minute. But basically there is a hole on the bottom of this that is ultimately sealed with rubber bushings. 
uh, and a rubber valve. So this rubber bushing goes on the bottom and then the extractor here, the top of the extractor goes down on top of that and that seal between the base of the tank and the extractor, the aluminum portion of the extractor pump here, and that rubber bushing right here are what keep oil from leaking out. And then you have at the bottom that small hole, and in that small hole, bear with me here. Okay, I've done a little reconfiguring here. So this is the bottom of the extractor. That is the small hole that I was referencing. And this is the rubber check valve, I will call it, that goes into that hole. And on top of that, you have a small spring right here. Goes on top. I'm trying here. There we go. Followed by a plastic keeper here. You can see that goes over the top of the spring, fits inside the spring. And then basically a screw right there and one right there. And that's what holds this in place. So that rubber valve, as, as well as the previous rubber seal that I had showed you, is what is keeping oil from coming out of the bottom of this extractor. So my thought there is that if you're going to use this extractor, do not store it with oil in it, right? So empty it out into another container, get as much out as possible so that there is no possible chance that any remaining oil in this extractor could possibly leak out. And you can see that center portion of the tank is about, oh, about a little bit more than a half inch that sticks up from the base of the tank. So if you have a little bit of remaining oil in the bottom, it would not be a leaking potential. So that's my thought there. And I will continue to pass info along here as I uh, review this extractor. Okay, changing the oil here on a Honda Pilot. Just uh, tried manually pumping the oil extractor and it's working. So, pretty good flow, I have to say, for maybe about seven or eight uh, pumps with this. I'm gonna give it a try and I'm gonna release the pressure here, then I'm gonna give it a try by turning on the uh, valve here and uh, using compressed air. All right, gonna go ahead and uh, use the compressed air. Seems like it's working okay. I will uh, check back here in just a minute. See how well this thing is doing. It's only been about uh, 20 seconds since the previous video. You see, making pretty good progress here. So far, so good. Just uh, gonna test this valve out.
making pretty good progress, I have to say, compared to my typical experience of manually pumping. But this is, uh, let's say, probably 30% faster than manually pumping and having to come back and pump every now and then to uh, keep the uh, vacuum going. So, so far, so good. Pulls about uh, four and a half, five quarts. We are coming up on uh, just about three. So I'll check back uh, in a couple. Okay, just a quick update here. I made a little mistake in the previous video. I thought that we were only at three quarts extracted before I cut out, but um, it's actually the four liter mark is right here. Kind of tough to see. That's the four and a half liter mark right there. So we're just a little bit below four and a half. This takes, this vehicle takes about four and a half. So it looks like I've gotten all of the oil out, pretty much the vast majority of it with the extractor. Um, another thing uh, worthy of note is that it was easy to clean the two tubes that I used to extract the oil. I just kept them attached and I sprayed a little brake clean in while the air was on and it uh, cleaned all of the oil out spotless out of both of the tubes so I could restow them here without having to worry about uh, making an oily mess. So I'll come back again with kind of a final thoughts uh, follow-up video here. Thanks. Okay, I am back in the shop. I have finished uh, changing oil with this oil extractor. Just have some final thoughts here. Uh, overall, it performed very well for me. This is the first time I've used an oil extractor where you can connect an airline to it. And uh, I have to say that it worked uh, much quicker than I am used to uh, versus just manually pumping the extractor. So that was, uh, that was pretty interesting. It, it pulled all the oil out of that Honda Pilot in just a couple of minutes at the most. Cleanup has been super easy. Um, I'm happy to say there's no leaks. There's uh, no sign of any leaks. Uh, as I mentioned in previous videos, I had some concerns about the design. I had showed you the bottom there and uh, I've looked this thing over up and down and there is absolutely positively no sign of any leak or leaks. I, I did uh, dump out the oil pretty much as soon as I was done. I left it in there for, I don't know, about an hour or so and uh, did not experience any, any issues there. So I'm happy to say that worked out fine. Um, I did notice that, you know, this thing is a little bit tall and narrow. So when I had the uh, lines connected into the dipstick and I had the airline connected to the extractor, it was a little bit wobbly there. So I had to kind of set it up and get it to a position where it was nice and stable. Uh, but otherwise it was pretty impressive. Um, cleanup was a breeze. You know, I showed you, or I mentioned in the previous video, how you can leave the, uh, extractor lines connected, keep some air pulling through the system and spray a little brake clean into the hoses and it cleans them, uh, right out. And you can put them back into the holder here without having any oil, uh, residue inside the hose is dripping down into the base of the uh, the hose holder here. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with this thing. It did work. I did do some testing just uh, manually pumping it as well. But boy, it works a whole lot faster, I'll tell you, uh, using the airline. So um, I'm pretty picky when it comes to this kind of stuff. And I can't give it five stars because, you know, I think it's it is... A little on the narrow side. A lot of them are made this way where they're narrow and tall like this. It's a little bit too wobbly for my liking, but it's not insurmountable. It's not that big of a deal, but I would prefer kind of a more stable base. But so far, so good. It's only been one time using it here, but I'm very happy with it. I would uh, go with four stars on this. Okay, I am back again. I couldn't help myself here. I just wanted to add a couple of additional comments. Um, I would say that I'm very happy with this extractor, but it would not replace the other two extractors that I have, mainly because the other two 
are smaller. One is very small. It's good for something like two quarts. So that's perfect for those generators, lawnmowers, uh, snow blowers, that sort of thing. And the one that I use for my watercraft uh, is also somewhat of a smaller unit. But the thing that is different between those two and this oil extractor right here are the hoses. So the extraction hoses in my, on my other two extractors are basically very flexible, highly flexible, rubbery hoses. So they are good for still getting into, say, the dipstick on watercraft, but they are super, super flexible, so they are very easy to use and they're very convenient. This extractor, just like others of similar design, is much better suited toward vehicles, I would say. And I'll show you a reason here right now. The hoses that come with this type of extractor are basically firm plastic hoses. I know it's kind of hard to see here, but these things are, that's what, about four feet long, and they don't offer much flexibility. So if you were gonna try to use this, say changing oil uh, on a lawnmower or something, you might end up frustrating yourself. Even the smaller attachments that go into this main hose here are uh, basically rigid, uh, hard plastic type hoses. So this, here's the other one. This is the one I used on the dipstick for the pilot. This is not going to be a convenient, easy system for changing oil on small engines. So I would not recommend it for that. It's no fault of this uh, extractor. They're, th most of the other ones of this type have a very similar design with these uh, rigid hoses, but uh, perfectly good for doing cars. That doesn't seem to pose any kind of an issue. I didn't really have a problem, although I did mention the lack of some stability. Uh, but um, I wouldn't want to use this for small engines. It would be frustrating to say the least, uh, but I would definitely use this again uh, on a car without uh, hesitation. So sorry, I just had to add that one last bit in there. Thanks a lot and take care, folks.